Hello, welcome to another tactical video. This time we are talking about the Aegis defence line. Now, obviously, it's being a defence line, you're going to want it in your table half, and you're going to want to put it around one or possibly two of the objectives in your deployment zone. But how? would you set up your troops behind it so first off let's set this little puppy up obviously everything needs to be connected you cannot have two different sets of ages so you have to connect it all up so using this as a basic alcove protection like so, connecting all the way around, and you get your quad gun. You're gonna want to smack straight, smack bang in the middle. The problem with Aegis defence lines, you have to fill every little gap behind it. Otherwise, opponents could deep strike in, and there's your advantage gone. So, take this very little platoon here, for example. So, heavy weapons, we'd set up, line around, like so. Keep them spread apart, and keep them more than an inch away from the Aegis defence line. I'll give you the reason in a bit and then you've got your infantry squad spread them out that way if anyone's got any ordnance or blast markers they're not going to hit your big jumbled up troops because most people they would stick them right up the front of the trench line like this and squish them all together that's a bad decision and I'll tell you why in a second so you're going to want to spread them out, keep your sergeant smack bang in the middle, like so. This, I would say, put it to the side, slightly. And then your highest ballistic skill character, put in base contact with the auto cannons or defensive weapons, and then spread out his command squad now that is how I personally would set it up the reason for this is obviously there isn't a single spot anywhere here where they could deep strike into even if they didn't scatter because this tiny little spot not enough space they would have to deep strike outside of the Aegis defense line and then you still get your defence because if you look from the other side of the age of defence it is having more than 25% coverage of your troops that would give you the defence bonus of 4 plus now Spreading them out covers all of that possibilities. Uh, say there was an objective there, you've got that hold of that objective. Say there's another objective over there, you've got hold of that objective as well. You've got your command ready to give out orders. You're not crushed together, so you're stopping blast templates or flame templates from causing mass damages. And you are over or more or exactly an inch away from the actual Aegis defence line so say this catching right here was part of an entire squad of whatever some kind of enemy they want to charge in they move they fire they get you get the uh, defences saves from the Aegis defence line then when they charge 
if you was up close to the defence line like that, they are in combat. Even though they are the other side, they can still swing over the top, they can still hit you, so they're still classed in combat. You keep them back an inch, then they have to do that modifier, they have to minus two inches to get over the barrier so they can get into combat. There's a big difference there because if most people crush their squads right up, they charge in, they get all their shots, then they get to there and they're in combat. You spreading your guys out, they can't deep strike, they charge in, they roll, say here, they roll a seven to get into combat. So they take their shots, they get the uh, we get the overwatch, they move seven inches for the charge. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They haven't made it into combat. It's not in base combat, base contact. So all in all, if you're going to use an Aegis defence line, do not put your troops right up to the Aegis defence line because you will lose all bonuses for it. You'll gain your 4 plus armour save, but that's it. That's all you will gain. You won't get the extra minus 2 for their charge because they don't have to jump over it, they're already there. They can reach you from the other side of the Aegis defence line. Now, when it comes to what troops you set up behind the Aegis defence line, me personally, I love setting up heavy weapons behind the Aegis defence line. So it'd be auto cannons over there, or las cannons. Uh, auto cannons may be structured in the middle, and then las cannons the other side with a platoon command. But you're going to want that counter attacking perspective as well. So you want at least one squad of regular troops behind the Aegis defence line. So that if they fail their charge, then you could shoot them from your half, your side of the Aegis defence line. So move up or jump over. But it makes no difference. And then shoot and then charge. You might not win the combat, but you'll stick them outside of the Aegis defence line so that you could fill the gaps with whatever you've got else inside the Age of Defence line and then they've still got to charge over so that's two turns they've got to charge into your Age of Defence line if they get over that wall then you're in big trouble so yeah keep back an inch from the Age of Defence line make sure every single little bit behind it is completely covered with your troops so they can't get in through the wall and make sure you stick an objective marker in there because if you're going to be getting an Aegis defence line you're obviously going to be staying still so you want them and objectives behind it so you can protect it at full might All right. Take it easy. Good gaming.